Hey guys, good morning. Welcome back to my channel. Or if this is your first time visiting my channel, welcome. I'm Christine. I love doing home and garden projects with you on here. And when it comes to home and garden, I like to blend the two and bring nature inside the house. And I found the more nature or more natural I can make my house, the better it's made me feel. And this is something that's been like a slow evolution. Having plants around is there's something very therapeutic about it and it just brings such joy. And there's particular plants that really spark a lot of joy. So I'm going to be sharing one of my wish list plants with you guys. And I've been after this one for a while. I, it kept eluding me. Every time I would go to order it, it would sell out before I could get it. So I finally got a hold of it though. I ordered it on Steve's Leaves and I will post their website below. They sell out of stuff though really fast. So you gotta be quick. <laughs> even, even like when you have the thing in your cart, um, they can't hold it, you know, so someone else can be purchasing it. But anyway, you guys don't care about all that. <laughs> it's, it's a whole thing though trying to get a hold of certain plants but it's it's fun at the same time you know because it's like this this challenge the chase you know trying to get this one plant anyway so i got a hold of this little baby it is it's i hopefully if it arrives alive <laughs> you, you never know in the mail so as i'm filming this right now i'm waiting for it to arrive it should be here my postman usually comes in about an hour so i'm just like hanging out by the fire this morning <laughs> just kind of it's cold outside so i'm just kind of keeping warm and cozy in here i just want to pop on the camera and talk to you guys before we get started so what i decided to do was make this video in two parts so as soon as it arrives i'll run out there I'll grab the package we'll run into the plant room together and we'll rip open the box <laughs> and see see if everything made it it. and uh, I'll do the unboxing with you and then I'm gonna wait a while I don't know how long maybe a week maybe two weeks and then I'm gonna come back for an update on how the plant is doing um, at least the main plant that I ordered and we're gonna repot that so this is gonna be a plant mail unboxing and also repot with me so that's the plan for this video and um, I guess I'll just I'll let you guys go for now and the next time you see me we're gonna be running to the plant room and unboxing this thing so all right i will see you guys in hopefully about an hour if my postman is on time okay see you guys soon all right let's see how everything fared in transit okay so um it was two orders that got combined because i placed them back to back oh yes they always pack their orders so good so again i ordered these from steve's leaves oh look, look at that little baby Oh my gosh, it is so cute. Look at that. So they use tissue paper also to keep the soil locked in, which is a great way. I've noticed a lot of sellers do that and it just keeps the soil down in the pot so it doesn't end up all over the plant. But oh my gosh, it's beautiful. It's so creamy and it will get more pink on it. So the, the pink color will come from the back side of the leaf and looking at the top, you'll see more of a baby pink and from the back, you'll see more of a darker pink. But um, yeah, I love these plants so much. And that is a really, really pretty one too. So this is a fluminensis, but when you see it on Steve's leaves, they'll call it Tradescantia mandula. Mandula is a synonym for fluminensis. And fluminensis have these really just light, dainty, delicate leaves. They're a little bit thinner. They're much different than like the, um, can I grab this one right here? Let's see if I can reach and grab this. So just for a comparison, this is Tradescantia nanook, and then this is the Fluminensis. And sorry, it's a little bit bright. <laughs> I'm right next to the window here, so it might be washing them out a little. But just to show you like the difference, these have much more thicker, hardier, uh, like succulent type of leaves, whereas the Fluminensis are much more, you know, dainty and delicate and flowy and thinner. The leaves are definitely thinner. Um, so just wanted to share that with you now. Okay, now I gotta try to get this back out here. Uh, okay, so these get really beautiful colors and they call it tricolor because it'll have green as well as the cream and pink. Okay, now the whole reason that I actually placed my seeds leaves order. Yes, this is a Monstera. I have not gotten to see one of these in person ever in my life, so I'm pretty excited. It's a small pot. It's just like a little four inch pot or a three and a half inch pot. Oh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, it's bigger than I thought. Oh wow. Oh my gosh, look at the leaves. Oh my goodness, oh my gosh, it's got little roots on it. Oh, it's so cute. Oh, it's got all these little aerial roots on it. Okay, so this is a Monstera Siltipicana. Wow, I did not expect it to have this many leaves either. That is amazing. 
Look at the leaves. Ah, the veining on these leaves are just incredible, especially because I'm like right next to the window, so I'm seeing them all like backlit. Let's see, will you guys be able to see what that looks like? Oh, sorry, it's a little bit washed out. I did not expect it at all to have this many leaves or vines, or especially like roots already started. Oh, um, I'm gonna have to get up. I'm gonna have to get this on a pole so it can start climbing right away because clearly, clearly it's looking for something to climb on with all those roots poking out there. So monsters are generally vigorous growers and although I've never grown this plant, clearly this is my first time ever touching one, um, I think that it is probably also a vigorous grower. Speaking of, it's got a big old fat root poking out the bottom of the pot right now as we speak. Oh my gosh, it's got it's got a bunch of roots down there. Oh shoot, okay, it's totally ready to break out of this pot. I'm gonna have to make a pole. I do have I do have a moss pole behind me here that I just made. This is a little bit big though. I need this actually for a different plant. And uh, well, actually no. It, I mean, it, if I put it on there right now, it would have plenty of room to climb on. And I mean, I guess actually that might work. Okay, we might, this This might be, okay, I'm gonna have to make more moss pulls now because now this thing is like probably gonna move on to this, all right. Okay, I'm just gonna set this here on my desk and lean the vine up against the wall and it's just gonna stay there until we go find a pot for it and it's probably going to steal my tetraspermas, my, my raffidivora uh, tetrasperma moss pole, which is why I made that moss pole. But now that thing's probably gonna move on to that and then I gotta make another one. Anyway, I've got like, I'm way behind in making moss poles. So this was the plant that I placed in the second order because I got a notification that they had got this one back in stock, but I had already placed that first order. So anyway, um, no big deal. They do combine shipping for you. So if you place multiple orders, they'll automatically combine them for you. If, um, I mean, you know, if they haven't like packed your other order already and prepared it for shipping. I feel it's leaves right now. So this is a scandapsis. Oh, it's so cute. Oh my gosh. Okay, so I was really curious how this was gonna look compared in comparison with my Argreus. Okay, so both of these are Scandapsis Pictus. This one is the one that I've had for a little while now. This one is Argreus. And then this is the new Silvery Anne that just arrived. Um, so I'm just comparing the difference. The Silvery Anne does have more silver on it, but they they still look pretty similar. They normally in nature, they shingle up uh, like the bark of trees and stuff. It's really, really cool if you ever see that. Um, so that's what they do in their native habitats. And so that's what I wanna try to get them to do in here in the indoor plant jungle. So I'm hoping that we can get both of these to shingle. Okay, the Silvery Anne Scandapsis Pictus is already putting out like aerial roots on there. Let me see if my, my little Argreus is putting out any aerial roots yet. This one is much shorter, so I don't think it's quite ready to be throwing out those aerial roots. Oh, you know what? There is a couple on the longer one. Yeah, okay, there's a few. There's a few. They're really short though, but this one is like full on ready. So we're, we're gonna get that, I think, on the first plank because that one's like ready to start grabbing onto something. So I'm, I'm pretty excited about that. Now, what you could do is you could actually have these in a hanging basket. That looks really cool too. I mean, it looks gorgeous. These things look gorgeous no matter what you do with them. Um, but I think I really want to go with the shingling method. But I mean, either way, like if I had two, I would, well, I do kind of have two, but I want both of these to shingle. But if I had like two of the same or something, I would grow one in a hanging basket and do cuttings on it. And then I would have one shingling. Hey guys, welcome back. So I'm doing an update and a repot now. So it's been one week since we got the Monstera Siltipicana in and it's ready to get onto a moss pole. It wants to start climbing right now. And normally I would follow Steve's leaves, um, you know, uh, I guess suggestions of leaving your plant in its pot for 30 days while it acclimates. But this thing wants to climb now. It, it does not want to wait. And so I'm just gonna go ahead and repot it right now. It's not a big deal. Uh, so when we got it, I temporarily just, you know, leaned that long vine against the wall, you know, and I was just like, okay, we'll, we'll, we'll be back. We'll figure it out later. And we'll, you know, when I pot it up, I'm gonna be putting it onto a moss pole. But within the week's time, it has already started attaching itself to my wall. 
and uh, its aerial root, it has this fuzzy aerial root that was just leaning against the wall and now it has flattened itself against the wall. So it's actually trying to hold on to it now. So we're gonna take care of this today because I, I'd feel really bad if it like, you know, thought it was all stable and it started climbing up the wall and then I had to rip it off the wall and probably some of my paint with it and probably some roots off of it. So I don't want that scenario going on. I do love the idea of having plants climb up the wall, but this space right here is, is not the place for it. Uh, although it probably thinks it's perfect because I got the grow light right up here. So it was probably loving that. So I'm just gonna add a little bit more moss to this pole that I already had made, um, just because the pot that this is gonna be going in is a little bit smaller. And so I'm just gonna fill that extra gap there. Um, Cause originally this was gonna go into a larger pot for somebody else, but they, they're gonna have to wait cause this poor little baby, I gotta get it off the wall. Uh, so I got my I got a bunch of wet moss here, which I don't know about you guys, but I I personally love like playing with like it's like arts and crafts when you get to play with moss and soil and stuff. I love mixing up my own soils, and I love playing with this moss. Although what what is this? Is this part of the moss or what? Is that like a plant that was just tangled in the moss? I'm not sure, but uh, it it looks like it had some roots on it. <laughs> I don't know what that is. Anyway, um, so I'm just gonna grab a handful of moss. So this is, I've got a bowl with water here that I had the moss soaking in. I let this soak, it's probably been like 30 minutes now, and then I just grab handfuls. Here, let's go and wring this out, good. So I just wring that out, and then I have it kind of fluffed here on my tray to work with. Um, so let me go ahead and grab just a handful of this and we'll just make this moss, we'll just bring it down the pole a little bit further. So you can use any kind of twine you want. I'm just using this artificial sinew. I already have a ton of this because I use it in jewelry making. Um, so it has like a little bit of a, a, a feel, like a tacky kind of feeling, so it grabs onto stuff really nicely. Um, but you can also use like fishing line, monofilament. So I just fold my piece of twine in half. So the center I wrap around the underneath side. You can really only hold like a handful of moss onto the pole at a time as you're wrapping. So I just work in little sections and I just crisscross my twine as I go. Or you could wrap it as you go, you know, like sort of twist it all the way down. So up to you, however you want to wrap it. You can use as much twine as you need and wrap it as many times as you want. And then once you get to the end of your twine, I just tie that in a knot to secure it. Okay, the moss pole is done. And you can see all of this is the dried moss and you can see the wet portion that we just added to it down here. Now, this is a pretty tall moss pole for a little bitty baby plant like this, right? But this, I've heard the Monstera Siltipicana is a fast grower. And if it's anything like the Monstera ansonii, that thing, my Monstera Ansonii has gone crazy. It's climbing all over the place. It's out of control. I need to do some serious uh, Ansonii management over there because it's it's like twining all over the place. So this little baby, I'm just gonna go ahead and start it off on a nice tall pole where it can take its time climbing up there. It'll have plenty of room and I don't have to fuss with it uh, too soon down the road, right? But there's a ratio that you're working with trying to figure out when you're doing a tall pole, you have to consider what the pot that you're gonna be putting it in is gonna be like what the size of it is, how heavy is it. So on one hand, you're trying to incorporate vertical height into a pot. You wanna make sure the pot is large enough, stable enough, or heavy enough to be able to support that vertical height, right? But on the other hand, you might have a very small plant with a very small root system. And this is in a three inch pot. So the roots are probably pretty tiny in there. I haven't seen them yet. So we're gonna unpot it and see what's going on in there. And that also is gonna be a factor in deciding what size pot you're using. So you normally just up pot a plant into the next size up, right? But this is definitely gonna be going into a six inch pot instead of just, you know, like a four inch pot or something, right? So it is gonna be getting bumped up quite a bit, but I think it'll be okay, especially cause I'm gonna be customizing the soil. It could go in there, but this one would hold less volume of soil. Yeah, I might put it in that one. I think I'm gonna just, I'm just gonna try. Just try. I'm just gonna try. <laughs> Cause sometimes you just gotta do things to get throw yourself into it and you don't know until you try it. Now let's just set that in there for a minute. And we're, oh, there we go. Okay, every time I pot up plants, I always use a piece of window screen over the drainage holes. So I'm just gonna get that down in there and Go and set this here and just lean it on the wall. And I've got my aeroid mix already mixed up, so I'm just gonna grab some handfuls of it. 
So in this mix, I use cocoa husk chunks, pumice. I have different sized pumice uh, pieces in here, and then also charcoal. Um, did I use? I didn't use any orchid bark in this one. Sometimes I do. I do have some orchid bark in a couple different sizes, a medium size and fine size. Um, so if you don't have access to like the cocoa chunks, you know, cocoa core chunks, you could always use uh, just orchid bark as a perfect replacement for that. Uh, and if you don't have access to pumice, you can always use perlite. I also have the happy frog potting soil in here. So I do like a 50% mix of that. And then the other 50% is aeration ingredients. There's also worm castings in here for some added nutrients and I also have some shredded sphagnum moss. Uh, I think I only put like a few handfuls in. So I already mixed this up but I'm just giving it a bit of a stir just to make sure that all the ingredients are mixed together. That way we get a good combination of the fine, you know, more of the potting soil moisture retention part mixed up well with the aeration ingredients. So it started out just kind of leaning against the wall and then this happened. So at first it was just lightly touching the wall and then suddenly it decided to start actually like getting into the grooves of the wall. So it's completely flattened itself out right against the wall, which is crazy. But yeah, that root there was not like that before. So it definitely felt that texture on the wall and was like, okay, here we go. And started latching onto it. And you can see up here as we get higher up, the plant itself, the stem really started getting close to the wall. Now I'm hoping if I go to pull this, it's not gonna actually be stuck. Okay, there, okay, good. I didn't want to rip that root or anything. All right, so I'll push you guys back on the tripod and we'll get potting up this little baby. All right. Okay, let's see what the roots are like. Okay, can you guys see that? So there's the roots. Look at this crazy one. There's like a bunch of root right at the very top too. So yeah, that one's, it's got a much more vigorous root system than I even expected. But then again, it is a monstera and they are very vigorous growers. So I'm just letting a little of that soil fall away. I'm not really, you know, teasing it very much. Okay, so that's where I'm gonna stop. I'm not trying to bare root it or anything. I just wanted to shake off some of the loose soil. So then the roots were, you know, kind of facing downwards where they can be ready to get into their new pot. Okay, I kind of got to keep it facing towards me just so I can see what's going on here. But what, is that a chunk of charcoal or what am I looking at? I don't know, is that a rock? But anyway, let's, let's move that. Yeah, this is gonna be so perfect for it, okay. Wow, okay, seriously, oh my gosh, these leaves, you guys, I can't get over the, the beauty of these leaves with the moss, oh. I gotta get a set of spoons, that way I can try to save my nails, because <laughs> I'm always digging and playing in soil now, and I'm trying to protect my nails. Okay, I'm gonna be careful not to do what I always do, which is I fill my pots up too high, and then it makes it difficult trying to water, so let me, let me not do that. Look at this. This thing's gonna go crazy on this pole. This thing, it's so cute. I haven't even attached it to the stake and it's already like perfectly holding on. <laughs> what, are, what are these other ones gonna do? That's a, that's a good question. No, I wasn't even paying attention to them. It actually has three, three vines total. Yeah, it's got three vines, okay, well. Those, those are gonna have to turn around because they're facing the wrong way. So they're, they're gonna have to figure it out. So let's see, how do I wanna tie this up? I think I might just use this because I do have my Velcro, which is really good if you have a plant that has like heavier vines that you're trying to attach to a stake um, or there's just like more, you know, you don't wanna cause pressure points. That's what that's really good for. But in this case, um, I think I'd rather like not have it stand out and that's gonna stand out way more than like this. It's gonna be like invisible almost. So in this case, since that doesn't have, you know, these vines don't have any weight to them, I'm not worried about my, my regular little twine causing any pressure sores on it. Okay, so this longest vine, the one that's in the center, it has a couple of aerial roots right here at these two nodes. I'm just gonna wrap my twine right in between those so that way that point, that part of the stem is nice and tight against the moss so those aerial roots can get in there. That one is gonna need to wrap around that way. Wait, 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 okay. I just wanna make sure it's kinda of getting near the moss where it needs to. Yes, okay, I think that's gonna be it right there. And we're not pinching any leaves or any anyone else's roots or anything, are we? Okay, it looks good.
Okay, let's give this little baby a water. Now I am gonna be top watering it because the soil mix I use, I find it doesn't wick as well from the bottom up. It's better if I water from the top down. I just want that soil to start sucking up some water because it was bone dry, the soil that I just planted into. Little more water from this side, right in here. And I love that Steve's Leaves has the little plant name tags with them too, so that's really handy. So I'm gonna poke this in here right in the back. So my aeroid soil mix is really fast draining. It's a very chunky mix. So you can already see that the water has drained straight through the pot and it is now in the catch pot. So I'm just gonna let that soak for maybe about 10 minutes. Uh, when I pot into bone dry soil like that, I just like to you know get it all resaturated the first watering. Um, and then, you know, then I'll, then, then I don't. <laughs> then like whenever I normally water, I don't feel the need to like soak all the soil completely saturated like that. Just the first watering when it's totally bone dry, just cause I want to even everything out. Let that soil kind of like condensed, you know, together and all the nutrients sort of get flowing around there. Um, if that makes sense. So anyway, first watering, I do like to saturate and then I'll let it dry out uh, in between waterings. Um, so not too dry, not, not bone dry again, but just, you know, let it dry out to uh, just a light bit of moisture, like maybe just in the bottom portion of the pot. So when, when most of it's dry, then I rewater. So I'm gonna need to grow this little baby out for a while and I'll report back to you guys and do updates on it. And then eventually I'll be able to do an actual care video on it. I don't like to ever do care videos or share care tips until I really know a plant. Um, so that way, you know, I can actually share helpful information with you instead of just information that's like repeated on the internet, right? Yeah, I'm just gonna have to see where I might want to live. I kind of think thinking almost right behind where the camera is right now but then again I always have my light set up there and then it would like block getting to see it so I'm not sure I want to do that and I think it's done soaking yeah that should be good I guess what I'm gonna do is until I find a better place for it I'm just gonna leave it up here on my desk so this is a southwest facing window here, so it's just gonna be missing the light, like the hot sun, so it'll be just out of that. Um, but it'll be really, really bright. So I think, I think, well, it seemed to be really happy when it was sitting right here, where the grow light will be on too, so it'll kind of get uh, light from both directions, I guess. But yeah, I guess I'll just leave it right there. It's so cute, I love it. It is such a gorgeous plant. I absolutely love this thing though. All right guys, I just wanted to update you on how the Monstera Siltipicana is doing. It's got new growth coming in down here. Let's see if we can move this. It's got new leaves that have opened up. I think it has four new leaves that just opened. So those two have opened. This one up here is a new one. And then up here at the very top, that one opened too. And it has new growth points at each point too. Oh, that one's gonna be a nice one there. So, so far so good. I just wanted to update you guys. And so it's been a week since we potted this up. So I was just editing this video and wanted to pop in here and share the updates and new growth. So, so far so good. It seems to be loving the new soil that it's in, the pot, and having something to climb on definitely. And also the lighting, it's getting bright indirect light. So, so far so good. I'll keep you guys updated on it. And after I have it for a while, I'll do an actual care video. All right guys, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate each and every one of you. And I hope you had fun potting up a plant. I love doing repots. Uh, so I've got some more actually. I'm gonna film another one probably right after this video actually. Yeah, we do have another one I gotta repot up there. So, all right, I'll let you guys go for now and I will see you in the next one. Bye.